What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Today, we're going to talk about Shadow of the Erd Tree. That's right. The Elden Ring DLC released yesterday. I've been playing it pretty much all night. This is going to be my review, my take on things. When this game was launched, it was a 10 out of 10. When this DLC came out, it's still a 10 out of 10. The DLC is a 10 out of 10. This game is just one of the most perfect games that is that has ever been created in the history of gaming. I, I don't know how they did it. I, I don't know why this game is so good, honestly. Sometimes I can't even explain it myself because it's a little bit different than what uh, you know I would normally play. Normally I play you know open world RPGs that are highly progressive and less skill based if that makes sense more more about you know strategy or you know finding the best loot rather than having you know really tough bosses maybe that's why this game is so good maybe that's why people love this game so much right because it's different than the normal rpgs we do get it's a souls game right it's a souls genre it's its own genre now you know um kind of like a bethesda game is a bethesda game a souls game is a souls game right and you could have many different iterations of it, but maybe that's why, maybe that's why it's a 10 out of 10, because it's so, so, so good and perfect and polished. And even, even the drawbacks of it, even the slight little things that uh, might annoy you or might not make sense or, you know, things that don't add up, like things that normally would be a negative to most games, you don't even care in this one. Like you, you don't even care. The game is so good. It, it doesn't even matter responsiveness doesn't matter server lagginess and pvp doesn't matter you know none of those things really matter because even including that if we include those those small flaws the game's still a 10 out of 10 that's it it's a 10 out of 10 game no matter i mean doesn't i mean the flaws be damned right it's a 10 out of 10 game so yeah i love playing this game completely addicted to the combat no matter how many times I die, and oh, I died a lot because the Shadow of the Earth Tree, I would say, is harder than the vanilla, you know, the vanilla map. I would say that. Uh, and also to note that most of the enemies are completely new and completely redesigned. There are no copy and paste enemies from, you know, the, uh, I guess you would say the, the regular realm, right? The, the normal realm, they didn't just copy and paste enemies and, and they didn't do, they didn't take the lazy way out. These enemies are completely unique, completely designed to have their own move sets. And maybe that's why it's harder because we're not used to fighting those, but it seems a lot harder to me. <laughs> Shadow of the Earth Tree seems a lot harder, but that's actually a good thing because I'll just get right into it. When you first step out into, you know, uh, the shadow of the Erd tree, the these lost lands or, you know, I forget the exact terminology, but, you know, the lands between when you step into the shadow of the Erd tree, this land by Mikula, uh, you get that that coming out moment. You get the, the first step where you, you walk out and you see all the world and it's brand new. Just like the first time you stepped out in Eld Elden Ring, the first time you got through Limgrave, you stepped out. And you're like, wow, where do I go? What do I do? What direction do I go in? You can go anywhere and do anything, right? And that's the same feeling you get in Shadow of the Earth Tree. So Shadow of the Earth Tree is worth playing because it feels like a whole brand new Elden Ring game. It feels like it's like Elden Ring 2 because the add-on is so huge and it creates that same feeling that you had the first time. If you're watching this, you're like me. You probably wish you could go back in time and experience Elden Ring for the very first time. Now, this gets close. You can't completely replicate that feeling because, you know, you've played the game already. But this gets close. Shadow of the Earth Tree is as close as you could possibly get to playing Elden Ring for the first time. To have that feeling like you're playing Elden Ring for the first time. From the moment you step out, the moment you get that first grace, you you meet um, uh you you meet the NPCs. I think Leda 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 is her name. You meet the NPCs, right? So just like you did when you stepped out in Limgrave, you met the NPC right off the bat. In this, you step out, you meet the NPC right off the bat, right at the grace, and there you go. That's your journey. You can start and go in any direction you want. Ah, Lady Leda spoke of you. You're that tarnished. Guided here by kindly Mikola. 
It seems like you'll have different branching paths that you can take in this one and NPCs you can get favorability with. I don't know very much about the lore at all, so I'm not going to try to explain that. I'm just going to talk about my experience with the game, the gameplay, how I think the story is playing out, and everything I like about it, basically. You first step out, right? It's just like when you stepped out at Limgrave. You first step out, the first enemy you fight is crazy, and it really messes you up. And I feel like the enemies in this one, in this realm, are um, better suited for, uh, you know, sword and board. I feel like if you have a shield, blocking is more important than this than it was, uh, you know, in the regular realm. I feel like this realm, you can block more attacks and, and do more blocking and that you need to block more in this. So I feel like they designed it a little bit for uh, more blocking mechanics. But, uh, you know, I did it with two great swords. I went through with two great swords. But the, this creature thing is crazy. It has a crazy move set. It jumps all over the place. And uh, uh, that's another thing to note about the enemies in this one is that they are they move a lot more than the enemies did in the you know vanilla realm, the regular realm. They move a lot more. They zigzag more. They jump up. They have a lot more. Uh, they're more dynamic to them. They they're harder to figure out in some cases, and it does make it. It makes it harder for you to just spam weapon arts and just kill everything with a weapon art. Now, you still can. I use weapon arts, of course. You still can. I'm on next game plus 10, by the way. You still can, but it's a lot harder. So for bosses, none of the common Azure won't really work for most of the bosses in this, uh, you know, DLC. Whereas in the vanilla game, you could just, you know, common Azure everything for the most part after buffs and either take take it down to half-life or take it out completely in this common azure is not as effective because of the move sets so instead of nerfing things or changing things with the vanilla game they just adapted the enemies to overcome your strategies your typical strategies that you would have you know in the uh the regular realm the lands the lands between the regular realm the typical strategies you would have in the regular realm are overcome not by nerfs or or changes in difficulty per se they're overcome by enemy movement now in this realm in the shadow realm there are in the shadow realm it is a higher difficulty overall because they added this these new tiers kind of like golden seeds they added basically a new mechanic like golden seeds and you could pick up these these items You'll see on the screen their names because I am really have a really bad memory. You pick them up and basically you buff yourself. So it's just a static buff. You buff your attack and, and defense with the seeds basically as you go through and, and get the parts of Mikola. So you go through and you track Mikola. And there's, there are graces, so you have the graces, but you also have pieces of Mikola's flesh. Don't really understand the lore and all the stuff behind that. But there, there are like there is like a deep lore, a deep, a deep mystery to it. Like most of the time in most Elden Ring uh, stories, and this one in particular is the same way. For the enemies, the bosses, they're a lot harder. They are fun. They make you feel like you're playing the game for the first time, and their movements overcome a lot of weapon arts. And the mimic too. I I did use the mimic in quite a few fights because of how beefed up these bosses are, and even the mimic gets killed right and part of the buffs that you get the seeds that you get in the new realm the shadow realm one of them does buff your summons too so not only does it buff yourself but it also buffs your summons because uh, you know the developers or miyazaki understood that hey this land is tough you get these buffs the good thing about it is though that the buffs only apply when you're in the shadow of the earth tree realm when you go back to the regular realm those buffs no longer apply. So you can't just go back to the regular realm and be completely OP and just destroy everything with these new buffs. The new buffs are only applicable in Shadow of the Erd Tree realm, which is really cool the way they did that. Because in most games, when they add an expansion, you have power creep. You do the expansion, you get all the best weapons, you get all the new buffs, you, you level up higher, then you go past the level cap, then you go back to the vanilla game and the vanilla game is ruined, right? Because you're, you're buffed from the expansion. They don't do that in Elden Ring. In Elden Ring, FromSoft said, hey, look, 
you're going to be buffed when you're in the shadow realm. And when you go back to the regular realm and the light of the Erd tree and the light side of the Erd tree, you're not going to have those buffs anymore. So basically you're going to have the same power level as in the, you know, the light side of the Erd tree as you do in the shadow of the Erd tree. I like the way they handled that because it, like I said, it is very creative and it keeps the game fresh and compelling no matter how many times you play it, how many next games you're on, whether you do Shadow of the Earth Tree or you do the light side of the Earth Tree. If your favorite realm is Shadow of the Earth Tree, that, you know, they have you covered. If your favorite realm is the light side, you like the vanilla game, they have you covered. You won't be able to be become OP, basically. Well, you could become OP, but <laughs> not because of the expansion, right? So I, they do separate it. Separation, though, is the only slight, slight, slight negative or uh, ding against it. There's only a very slight negative to it is that the realms or what you do in the realms don't interact with each other much at all. That's the only thing. So NPCs and, and quests and dialogue and, and pr story progression doesn't really translate that much between the realms. So that's the only disadvantage that I could see. It doesn't. I haven't noticed any new dialogue with Gideon or anything, so you can't talk to Gideon about Mikola from, from what I've played so far. Now, if you can, and I'm wrong, you can correct me in the comments, but from what I've played, there's not too much cross-dialogue or cross-progression between the two realms. Which I get it. It's a creative standpoint. Uh, from a creative point of view, it's supposed to be a whole nother land, a whole new experience, and they do nail that. So it is like playing Elden Ring for the first time rather than a continuation or a sequel. It's a whole new land. They added a bunch of new weapons. I think like over 70 weapons. They have new weapon arts. They have new ashes of war. Everything looks good with these weapons. They're designed really well. They added a bunch of intelligence weapons or weapons that scale off intelligence. They have more weapons that scale off arcane more hand weapons. They have some bows in here too. Uh, there's a new whip. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. And I think the whip in this one adds poison. So they they have a, a thing where more weapons add poison in this one. And I think there's also a sleep weapon. But there are a bunch of new weapons. They're, re they're really nice to use. They're not OP. They just fit in line with the regular weapons. They're just different. And you can use different tactics, different strategies with them. I really like the twin blades. All the bosses you kill also drop, you know, the, the remembrance so you can get the boss weapon. Weapon additions, 10 out of 10. So, so far, we're at a 10 out of 10 for the land, 10 out of 10 for the narrative, 10 out of 10 for everything, the bosses, the enemies, the weapons. Is there any negative to this whatsoever? None. There, There is no negatives for this DLC. I can't believe I'm saying that because I am not an Elden Ring creator. I'm not an Elden Ring like fanboy or anything like that. I just casually play and I'm addicted to it when I play. So I got to, you know, NG plus 10. That's as far as I go. I, I don't do any no hit playthroughs, nothing like that. But it, th no bias whatsoever. This is 10 out of 10, man. There, there's just the only negative is that there, there isn't there isn't very much cross progression between, you know, the light side and the dark side of the earth tree. There's no, you know, cross cross narrative. From what I've experienced so far, I could even be wrong about that, but there's no, like, I haven't noticed any new dialogue options. Uh, you know, the fingers don't, don't really react or, or say anything. Um, I'm pretty sure, you know, if, if you go talk to like dung eater, you're like none of the, none of, you know what I'm saying? None of the, none of the, uh, NPCs or dialogue has any kind of cross progression, of course, but they did that on purpose, you know, to keep the land, you know, to keep 
each realm separate and make it feel like a new experience, which they absolutely know. Exploration is a 10 out of 10. The map is pretty big. It's pretty huge. It's like, I would compare it to an entire section of, you know, the, the regular realm. So if you took the regular realm and you took something like Limgrave or Kaelid, I would say it's like that. I would say it adds a whole new realm to explore. Exploration is also a 10 out of 10. The map design is also a 10 out of 10. Of course, what would else would you expect? They have secrets. They have nooks and crannies. They have places that you could see on the map that you want to get to. And you try to jump, you know, with your horse. You try to get there like, hey, maybe I can make it with my horse. But you fall to your death. All that good stuff. There's, there's verticality. There's castles. Multiple different castles. Huge bosses, secret bosses, optional bosses, invasions. You get invaded by NPCs and you're trying to figure out why they're invading you. They give you they give you story. They talk to you there. There's there's, um, you know, lore, bits and pieces of lore scattered around the, you know, the realm. So there's all these things here that makes the map design, the level design 10 out of 10. The exploration is a 10 out of 10 the lead into that. You have everything that you would have and, you know, a region and the regular Elden Ring game. You'll see footage of the bosses, exploration, some of the new weapons and things like that. This is spoiler free, so I am keeping it spoiler free. I am going to end it right there. Hopefully this gives you some insight and you like my perspective on things from an average gamer where, you know, I'm not specifically an Elden Ring content creator and I'm not like, you know, I don't do hardcore Elden Ring playthroughs or anything like that. Average perspective, this game is addicting. It is a 10 out of 10. If you love the first Elden Ring and you want to feel that experience again of playing Elden Ring for the first time, this game will do that for you. This game is everything that you want in a video game. But I have to warn you, I have to warn you, do not play this game if you have work the next day. Do not, do not start playing this game if you have work the next day because you will stay up all night and you will be exhausted at work. All right, that's the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks.